exciting day because I am off to Old Broadcasting House um, just off of Regent Street, which is down there, um, at the BBC to have a meeting about the Young Writers Award, which I am judging. So I will leave links below this video where you can go and enter because that's hugely exciting and I want to see the like young aspiring writers within my audience enter this competition so that I get to read your work and you might potentially win a really cool prize. So check that out below and I'm gonna go into the meeting. I'm really early, of course I am. That was relatively quick, we are done. Had to film a few little bits and pieces to go on their various social media and hopefully my social media so you'll get to see that at some point. Um, but yeah, it was so good to meet all the other judges and uh, I think it's gonna be great. I'm really excited about it. Now I'm headed over to Wardour Street for a meeting um, about some glasses, which is quite exciting, some press stuff. Um, but I'm really early, so I'm gonna walk the long way down to Wardour Street, all the way down Regent Street, past Lamez, and then left onto Wardour Street. And I just, I'm in a really good mood, and I forgot how much I love London. I always forget how much I love London until I'm back in London again, and I'm seeing all the gorgeous buildings and all the pretty London stuff. So I'm just going to enjoy that whilst I walk down Regent Street. That's the Apple Store. Look how beautiful it is. Look at it. Look at all that. I was just stopped in the middle of the street by a guy who told me he thought I looked adorable in my orange coat. Told me his name was James. James, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you very much, but I have to get to a meeting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Marvellous, that's great. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. I am now on Wigmore Street near Wigmore Hall, near the music studios, which is where I am rehearsing at six o'clock for my album, but I'm an hour and a half early, so I'm gonna go sit in the Costa opposite and do a little bit of work. I've got a video that needs to be up today, which I haven't edited, so definitely need to do that. Also, don't wanna get crushed by cars. Really big one. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, really big. Come on, buddy. 
Three, two, one, two, three, two, three, float. Hey! from the Votes for Women exhibition, which I just want to talk a bit more about because I loved it and thought it was great and um, I learned a lot. Something I learned today was that the suffragettes were actually a spin-off movement from the suffragists who had been campaigning for like 60 years um, and they were a non-militant um, group, which means they weren't violent, they didn't believe in violence, they um, believed that peace and writing to MPs um, and just like non-violent peaceful ways of protesting was the way forward. Um, but because they'd been campaigning for like 60 years, the suffragettes um, were developed. Some people believed the peaceful route wasn't working because 60 years had gone by and nothing had changed. Um, so the suffragettes were born. Whilst I don't believe in violence and I don't condone the acts of the suffragettes, I have also never felt oppression like that. I have never been oppressed to the point where I feel like I have no choice but to go on a window smashing rampage. Lots of people have this conversation about would I have been a suffragette? Would I have been brave enough to go on a hunger strike, go on a thirst strike, to chain myself to railings, um, to throw myself onto a racetrack in front of the king's horse, to, uh, you know, protest and window smash and carry out arson? I can't even imagine a scenario in which I would have to choose one way or another because I've never been in that situation and you know one could argue that I've never felt oppression like that because of the suffragettes which is amazing you know they were the pioneers of equality for women and you know say what you want about the suffragettes they had balls <laughs> they had balls like some of the stories that I heard today in that exhibition were extraordinary. My favourite story is about a suffragette called Kitty Marion. Instantly I was like, ooh, tell me more about her, it was because she was an actress. On display in the Museum of London is Kitty Marion's scrapbook, in which there are newspaper cuttings from shows she was in, when she performed at music halls, you know, all that good stuff you get from being an actress that is then in the press. Now along with these theatrical newspaper cuttings, aren't newspaper cuttings of suffragette arson. For those of you that don't know what arson is, it's purposely setting fire to something. And there's little clippings of pictures of trains and property that have been set alight. Now in the articles and the captions that go along with these pictures, it says that the police don't know who the arsonist was. They never caught anyone. But because these cuttings are in Kitty Marion's scrapbook, <laughs> we are led to believe that she was the arsonist behind it. Now, I don't condone arson. I don't condone arsonists, but I do find that a little bit funny. I also learnt today that the reason the suffragette colours are purple, white and green is uh, because purple is for dignity, white is for purity and green is for hope. Which personally I quite enjoy. I highly recommend that you go and check out the Votes for Women exhibit in the Museum of London. It is free entry to both the museum and the exhibition. Please go and have a look. It's so cool and just it's just so interesting and it's a part of history that I don't feel like should be forgotten so go have a look. Whilst I'm here I'm going to tie up this vlog quite nicely by bringing it back to the beginning. The BBC Young Writers Award. You guys should enter. I shall leave the link to the entry form and all the details on how to enter below this video but I'm going to read them out now just so that you've got a verbal visual instruction manual essentially. The deadline is 9am on March 19th. The award is open to UK residents including residents of the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands. You have to be aged between 14 and 18 years old. One entry per writer, written in English, a maximum of 1000 words, original fiction on any topic, typed on a computer, any font, size 12, 
black, double spaced, no page numbers, include a front page with details of the type of the story and the word count, and do not include your name anywhere on the story. They are the instructions for your submission, I will leave the entry form below. One of the things I love about this competition is that we judge solely based on the writing alone. Myself and the four other judges judge blind, we don't know anything about the author. We don't know name, age, sexuality, race, gender, nothing. We have absolutely no details on the author whatsoever. We are forced to judge solely based on the writing. For me personally, I'm looking for storytellers. I don't connect well with grammar or punctuation. I connect with the story and whether the story makes me feel something and whether it has an impact on me and if I'm left thinking about it for days or weeks or months afterwards. That's what I'm looking for when I'm judging this competition. So if you make a few typos, I ain't gonna care. I was also informed the other day that there has yet to be a Scottish winner of the BBC Young Writers Award. So come on guys. Where you at? Please enter. It would be amazing to have a bunch of you guys entering and potentially winning this competition and you then get your story read by a professional actor and broadcast by the BBC and you then get a personalised mentoring session with an adult author. So I will leave those details below and please go and enter. Next week I have photo shoots for my album. Whoa! That's so exciting, but I will be vlogging that day, so there shall be a vlog coming up soon of the photo shoots for my album. What? Cray cray. Cray cray. I'm gonna go. Bye.